is an exciting point for our class. We're going to start moving away from talking about only about derivatives. We're going to talk about something else. Ironically, we're going to do that by talking about derivatives a little bit more. But let's kind of look at just this simple example to see what I'm getting at. So we just have this problem where I'm biking at 30 miles an hour for three hours, and we want to know how far did I travel. And so what's actually important about this problem, this is a problem that we can do without any calculus, right? But how, how can we kind of interpret some of these ideas in calculus terms? Well, this 30 miles per hour, this is a rate of change, right? We've thought of velocity as a rate of change of distance before. So this is really a rate of change. And this is the, the amount of time I'm doing that rate of change for. And we want to know how far did I travel? Now, what is this how far did I travel? Well, this is really a total change okay and so when I'm asking this problem here I'm asking you to go from a rate of change for a certain amount of time to a total change and the way we can do this right we would just take 30 times 3 I would take my rate of change times the amount of time I was doing that and I would get 90 miles that's my total amount of change over that time right and so we can interpret this kind of idea the same problem also in a table in a graph form. How would this look in a table to, to figure out that I traveled 90 miles over those three hours? And so in this table, we're, we're just conveying the same information, right? At hour zero, I was traveling 30 miles an hour, one, 30 miles an hour, two, and three, same thing, right? And so how would I kind of work with this table to figure out how far did I travel, just like the last problem? We can kind of see that it's the same thing, but the way we really want to think about this table is, well, between t equals 0 and t equals 1, how far did I travel? What was my total change here, my total change? And you can kind of see that in all these examples between t equals 1 and t equals 2, it's always going to kind of be the same thing, right? In each of these areas, I was traveling 30 miles an hour at the beginning, 30 miles an hour at the end. So all in all, I traveled 30 miles an hour for one hour in each of these intervals. And so I traveled 30 miles, right? And same thing with all these other ones, 30 times 1, 30 times 1, 30. And so if we want to know total, I'm just going to add these things up to get my 90 miles, just like I did before. This might seem a little bit silly, but as we moved to more exam advanced examples later on, it'll be helpful to have this intuition. Finally, let's kind of think about a graph. So if I had a graph of this same situation, I biked for three hours, and this was my speed over those three hours. How far did I travel? Well, remember, we remember from before that all we had to do was 30 times 3. right? And so what is that, what is actually happening in the graph here? Well, we can kind of think about, I have a length, 3, right? And I have a height of 30. And so when I'm multiplying this 30 and 3, I'm really kind of finding the area of this rectangle here, right? This, this area ends up being 90 miles. That ends up being my total change.